So good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the tutorial for new users. So as I said earlier, my name is Eugenio Angriman, and I'm a PhD student at Humboldt University of Berlin. And uh, in this tutorial, uh, this is mostly intended for people who never used NatureKit before or who have very little experience with it. Now, uh, before we dive in, let's make it full screen. Okay. So before we dive in, let's take a step back from NatureKit and uh, recall ourselves uh, why we are here. So it's likely that we are here because we are interested in network analysis and uh, in efficient toolkits to analyze networks. Now, as many of us already know, uh, network analysis is a very multidisciplinary uh, field of science that um, uh, where we, the main objective can be summarized in uh, unveiling uh, non-trivial topological patterns in uh, network data. Now, for example, uh, in social network analysis, non-trivial patterns could be uh, vertices that are associated with the influential people or the community structure of the network. And we could go on with several more examples. Now, today, a um, major challenge in network analysis is to analyze massive data sets. We know that large real-world networks uh, can range from uh, millions to trillions of edges, and thus we need efficient algorithms to analyze such large data sets. Uh, we also know that networks are not always static, but can, they can change over time. So uh, we might want to exploit some intermediate results that we computed on previous snapshots of the network to speed up the analysis of future snapshots of the network. Um, now, these challenges motivated the development of NatureKit about seven years ago. Now, NatureKit has two main design goals that are still valid today. Uh, the first one is performance. So we want our algorithms to be efficient. So uh, this is why uh, most of them are implemented in C++. Uh, also, uh, many NatureKit algorithms support shared memory parallelism with the OpenMP so they can exploit uh, multi-core machines. Now, the second design goal is uh, usability and the integration. So we want NatureKit to be easy to use. And um, this is why main, most of the features that are implemented in C++ are also available uh, on Python via the Cyton interface. Uh, also, we want NatureKit to be easy to integrate with other software packages uh, or softwares like Jupyter Notebooks and uh, Gephi, but also with other Python packages like uh, SciPy, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Uh, so NetWorkit is organized in modules and uh, each module provides a specific set of features. Now here we have a selection of important NetWorkit modules. Of course, there are not all of them. And um, in this tutorial, we will just cover a few of them, namely uh, community detection, centrality measures, and graph generators. But for a full list of uh, modules and features, you can see the network data documentation. Uh, now, in addition to be easy to use and integrate, uh, we also want network to be easy to install. So the network Python front end can be installed in several ways, some of, when, uh, some of which have been added only recently. Now, the most popular way to install NetWorkit is to use pip, but since about one year ago, uh, NetWorkit can also be installed with the uh, Conda, uh, Homebrew, and also Spec. Now, for more, more details about NetWorkit installation, uh, you can see the later talk by Fabian, and uh, you can also read more about this in the NetWorkit GitHub page. Um, now, I would like to present you a notebook with some basic and practical use cases for NetworkKit. Uh, this notebook is uh, organized in five sections. First, we will see how we can read a graph and how we can visualize, uh, visualize it using Gephi. Uh, then we will uh, compute and uh, visualize uh, central vertices. Then we will see how we can uh, uh, generate a graph with different models. And finally, we will see a simple example of a community de detection. So uh, let's start. I will switch to the notebook now. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, uh, along with the uh, network kit, I will also import some other packages that I will need later. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, network kit is organized in modules. So the most of its features uh, can be used by writing network kit dot module name 
dot uh, feature name. Okay, so most most of the times when you have to analyze a graph, you also have to read it from a file. Now, NetWicket provides uh, several graph readers for popular graph formats like edge lists or uh, graphs downloaded from uh, public repositories such as Connect or Snap. Now, a full list of graph readers can be found in the documentation. Now, in this example, uh, we will read the popular uh, Zakari Kartik Lab uh, graph that I downloaded from Connect. So we will use the Connect graph reader. Now, the first instruction here uh, creates um, a Connect graph reader, which is located in the graph IO module of NetworkIt. But to actually read the graph, we have to use the read function, which is available in the, all NetworkIt graph readers. Uh, this function takes the path to the graph as an input parameter. And finally, we will uh, simply print the number of nodes and, and the edges of the graph. So this is what we get as a result. Okay, now let's see how we can visualize this graph using Giphy. Now Giphy is an open source software for graph visualization and uh, exploration. Uh, NetworkIt provides an interface with Giphy that we can use not only to draw graphs, but also uh, represent additional information about nodes and edges. Now, first of all, we will need to open Giphy. Uh, I will use a split screen for this. So let's see. Okay, we have Giphy here. And uh, we have to create a new Giphy project. And then we need to start the streaming plugin. Okay. Now, Giphy is ready to receive graphs and other information. And to send stuff to, to Giphy, we need to create a streaming client and plug it into our uh, workspace here. The workspace by default is located at this uh, local address. Okay, after we created the uh, Giphy streaming client from NetworkIt, we can export the graph by simply uh, by simple uh, a simple graph, sorry, a uh, function call. So after we execute this line, uh, the graph is exported to Giphy, but is not really easy to to see. So maybe we can make the edges, sorry, the the vertices a bit bigger. So I will use seven as a sides, and then we can draw it using an appropriate uh, graph drawing algorithm. All right. We zoom in a bit, we stop the algorithm, and this is what we get as a first result. Okay. Um, now, as a, in the next section, I would like to show you how we can compute the central vertices in the graph and how we can visualize them in Giphy. In, in this first example, I will use the harmonic centrality, which is a popular uh, centrality measure. Now, the harmonic centrality of a node V is defined as the harmonic sum of the distances from V to all the other vertices of the graph times number of nodes in the graph minus one. So this centrality measure, for those of you who didn't see it uh, in the past, measures how much the vertex V is close to all the other vertices of the graph. And uh, the complexity to compute this measure for a single vertex is linear in the size of the graph if the graph is unweighted. Okay. Now, in the next snippet of code, uh, we will compute the harmonic closeness for all the vertices of the graph. And then we will uh, visualize the results first in a matplotlib histogram. Uh, so to do so, uh, we create an instance of the algorithm harmonic closeness, which is located in the, the centrality uh, network module. Uh, this function takes a graph as an input and we set the normalized parameter to false, so we can match the definition of harmonic closeness that I gave here above. Now, to actually execute the algorithm, we need to call the run method, which is in this line. So uh, this instruction actually triggers the algorithm, and this here is where the majority of the work will be done. Then after the run is finished, we can retrieve and visualize the results. In this case, we get the scores of the harmonic closeness for every node of the graph. And we finally plot the Instagram. Uh, before we move on, I would like to remark that the, this pipeline is common for all network algorithms. That is, you first create an instance of the algorithm, then you run the algorithm, and finally you retrieve the results. If we run this code, we get as an output the, the Instagram, as I mentioned. Uh, now, 
an alternative way to visualize the centrality is to export it to Gephi. Now, this can be done by a, by a single function call uh, from our network uh, Gephi client. In this case, we just export the nodes values and these scores are the harmonic centrality scores and we call them harmonic C. So after we run this uh, line, we can color the vertices of the graph according to their harmonic centrality score. Now we choose a nice color palette like this one. We apply it. And now in red, we see the vertices with the highest harmonic centrality score, while in blue, we see the vertices with the lowest harmonic centrality score. OK. Now, sometimes uh, people are interested in just getting a ranking of the top k most central vertices of a graph and not the full, uh, all the, the centrality scores of the vertices. So to get this information, we can use the ranking version, uh, sorry, the ranking function here. And this function is available for all network algorithms that compute the centrality for all the vertices of a graph. Now, this function returns a list of vertex score pairs. And uh, this list is sorted by centrality score in descending order. Now here we fix uh, a value for k, five, and we extract the top k vertices with highest harmonic centrality, and we just print them. And this is what we get as a result. An alternative way uh, to visualize this, um, this data is to simply label uh, the vertices in the top five ranking and we export this label to Gephi. So in this example, I will just create a Boolean label for each vertex of the graph and the nodes um, labeled to true are in the top K while the others are not. After we export these labels to Gephi, we can choose in top K labels and we apply it and we see in green the vertices that are in the top five ranking while in red, all the other vertices. Okay, now uh, the algorithm that I just showed you here does not really scale because this computes the harmonic closeness centrality for all the vertices of the graph. And this cannot really be applied for large scale networks because it's a, an algorithm that, that is quadratic in the size of the graph. Now NetroKit provides uh, more sophisticated and uh, efficient algorithms to rank exclusively the top K most central vertices of the graph, uh, much more efficiently than just computing uh, the centrality for all the, all the vertices of the graph. And most, some of these algorithms also can handle dynamic graphs. In the next week, we will publish some more videos with tutorials about how to use these algorithms. But right now we have uh, to move on because time is short. Okay, now the next section of this notebook are graph generators. Now generators can be useful in several scenarios. So for example, when you need to generate some networks that resemble real world data that you cannot access or that you are not allowed to use. Now NetWicket provides uh, several graph generators uh, in the generators module. Now to generate a graph, you always have to write the same syntax. So NetWicket.generators. The, construct, the constructor of the generator dot generate. Now in the first example, we will see the random hyperbolic generator. This generator is use, useful to generate uh, random complex networks that have a power law degree distribution. So in this snippet of code, we will uh, generate a graph with uh, 100,000 vertices and uh, an average degree of 10 and uh, a uh, power law degree distribution with the uh, exponent three. Then we will uh, do a log log plot, a log log plot of the degree distribution of all the vertices of the graph. So let's do this. It takes maybe two seconds. Okay, as we can see, after about degree ten, we have that the degree distribution of this graph follows uh, power law. Okay. Now in the second example. Uh, we are going to generate a graph that has a clustered structure. And this, uh, we will use this graph later for our final community detection example. So for this purpose, we can use the clustered random graph generator. Um, 
So for this generator, uh, we, we can specify the number of nodes and the number of clusters in the graph. Additionally, we can also specify the intra-cluster and the inter-cluster edge probabilities. Now for this example, we will generate a graph with the 200 nodes and five communities. And after we generate this graph, we will export it to Gephi. So let's do this. Okay, so the graph has been exported to Gephi. Now let's make the nodes a bit bigger and then let's redraw this graph and zoom out and we stop. Okay, as we can clearly see, this graph has some community structure and let's see, let's see how we can uh, detect those communities by using Nature Kids. Okay, now in this final community detection example, uh, I, I will use the popular Luvan algorithm that identifies communities by modularity optimization. Now the formula below here is the definition of modularity and I put it here just as a reminder for those of you who already know what modularity is, but I will not explain the details due to lack of time. Okay, um, in the snippet below, uh, we follow again the general pipeline for a network algorithm. We first create an instance of the PLM algorithm. PLM stands for parallel to one method. And this algorithm is inside the community module. This algorithm takes as input the graph that we just generated. Then we run the algorithm. And finally, we extract the community structure as a vector of labels we, that we pass later to Gephi to visualize the results. So after we run this code, we can now color the vertices of the graph according to their communities. Uh, like this. Okay, so as we can see, uh, the algorithm successfully detected the communities because every vertex inside the same community has the same color. Okay, so with this, uh, we can go back for to the slides for some uh, final remarks. Okay, so conclusions, and this is mainly where you can get help. So uh, if you encounter any issue uh, using Network Kit, then I think that the first good place to get help is the documentation. So yeah, uh, read the docs and here we have the URL of the documentation. So we are working recently really, really hard to make the documentation more complete, more easy to browse. So please don't hesitate to have a look at the documentation. Now, if you cannot find an answer to your issues in the documentation, then and you're also sure that you searched well enough, then it is likely that either the, the documentation is not complete or there is a bug in the code. Now, in this case, we encourage you to contact us. You can open an issue on our GitHub page, or you can also reach us uh, through the mailing list, which some of you should already know quite well. Now, this is the end of my talk, and I thank you very much for your attention. And please feel free to ask any questions if you have any.